What is going on people of YouTube, my name happens to be Kurt Yo, and welcome to a brand new video where I talk about some players that you should be putting in for your game week 15 teams. Now usually I do 12, however I've got 13 because I can't split them apart at the moment. But if you do want to support the series make sure you leave a like and comment who you would put and who you should suggest sorry, to put in your team. Without further ado, let's jump straight into the well, three players in each position that I've got. So you don't know if this works, I'll go through each position and show you three players on who I think you should be considering to put in your team. So we're going to start off of course with the goalkeepers and um, actually we're just going to do it by team. So first of all we've got an Arsenal goalkeeper by the name of um, Petr Cech. Recently I've had a poor run of form. Um, conceding goals against Spurs, two, two against away against West Brom, one away against Norwich. They are having extreme injury problems at the moment. If you look at that, Sanchez, Cazorla, Walcott, Coquelin, Arteta, Zelalem, Rizitski and Wilshire all out. It's not looking good for them. However, checking goal is always positive. They're going home against Sunderland. Although Sunderland have won their last two games, surely they can't concede 4-4. Four in four. Spurs at home, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. But Spurs are a different sort of team compared to Sunderland. A much better team at the moment. And I think Sunderland will drop back off. And this will be the time to get Petr Cech in your team for a nice little cheeky clean sheet. And as I've got him in the team, it's worth the punt. Moving on to the second player that I've got, his name is David De Gea. Now De Gea this season has produced some good saves, but maybe hasn't been on the form that United would expect. I mean, you look at the last two games, because the goal against Watford and the goal against Leicester, but again, two away games. And again, you're looking at their game, home against West Ham. West Ham who have lacked quality recently. I mean, if we go on to West Ham and just show you a few, well, one of their players, let's go on Cresswell, let's say, to look at their results. You're looking at conceding two here, one here, four here, one here. Not really scoring that many goals since Pyre was injured. You're looking at the last four games being three goals and playing away at the um, Stadium of Lars, about to say, at the um, Old Trafford Stadium, you know, um, Theatre of Dreams, that's the one I was calling on, the Stadium of Light. You know, boring football, boss the team out of the game, and hopefully get the clean sheet for you. Lastly, we do have another goalkeeper, and it's a bit of a nasty one for this because he didn't fit into the thing, but. It's um, Martin Stickelenburg, uh, or Stickelenburg, uh, Stickelenburg, I'm just going to call him. Um, he is going to be in the team of the week, for the or team of the week. He's going to be one of the ones I suggest because at home against Aston Villa, although Aston Villa have been doing alright, in fairness to them, should be a chance to get a clean sheet. I mean, looking at Font coming back, and if Font can come back, you've got Cedric, Bertrand, Font, Van Dijk, or even Kulka if you want to stick him in. You know, hopefully not Yoshida because he just seems to be making mistake after mistake. If they've got a full strength of lineup, they should be able to ease towards the clean sheet unless Remy Gard has drilled into his team what they need to do, which is score and win games. Moving on now to the defenders now. And we, we've got a few strange ones now. And this is, you know, the, the goalkeepers is where it just drops off. The midfield and the defenders are really strange. Now you can look them at the top and bottom left hand corner, but if you haven't seen that, or it's too small, they're watching on the mobile device. And the first one is Liverpool defender. I know, I know. Shocking. But I'm chucking um, Nathaniel Klein in there. For the simple reason, you know, they've got a clean sheet at home against Swansea. You're looking at um, Liverpool, they're going away against Newcastle. Now, Newcastle have been in shocking form recently, and that will hopefully be set to continue. I'm looking at the fact that Klein can also get forward, you know, and they've been wary at the back. You look at them thinking, how many are going to concede this week? They got very, very lucky against Bournemouth. That's the last clean sheet I can remember. So, who knows what the future holds for Newcastle and Steve McLaren. How long has he got left? Who knows? I've probably supported him in many a podcast before. And he still hasn't performed, so the support is sort of going from myself. And that's when you know Mr. Lenient over here is... No. You're losing support in general. But a good chance to get a clean sheet. And also maybe an assist or goal or two from Nathaniel Klein as well. Um, this person was in it last week. Going on to the next one. Um, it's a Spurs centre-back by the name of Toby Alderweireld. Now, he's definitely worth punt. I've got him in my team now. I took minus four points because I knew I was going to win the head-to-head -head game. And he's just racking up points and racking up bonus points, you know. He's looking at six at the moment. He's also scoring goals. You look at the fact that he scored two, had one assist. Got one against West Ham. Draw against Chelsea. But next game is away against West Brom. Should be a game, maybe a nil-nil. Again, maybe Spurs grab one or two goals. I can't see West Brom scoring. So Toby Alderweireld is definitely one for you to consider. And lastly, this one is really strange. Probably one of the strangest I've got. You know, this week's um, selected players, but it's actually a Watford right back by the name of Alan Neon. Now, 
this is really strange. It's a really, really, um, you know, big risk, I suppose you can say. But I'm looking at Watford. They're at home against Norwich. He can get forward a lot. And he's really got a chance to, you know, get a clean sheet, but also get forward, grab an assist or two, like Nathaniel Klein. You know, more of an attacking fullback that will hopefully get a clean sheet. Norwich have been in shocking form recently. Will that be set to continue? Hopefully. Um, but if Neom's in your team, I think he could be a decent bet for a clean sheet. And at 4.6 million, you know, what else do you want? He's going to be a banging, banging player. But now we go on to midfielders, and um, one of them is okay. One of them is... You know, pretty good, and one of them is well, that's a bit strange. I'm gonna burp in a second, so I apologise for that. I can't bother to stop. Uh, but we've got an Arsenal midfielder up first, and the only fit one left by, by the looks of things is Meza Ertzel. He comes back and he's in fine, fine form. Someone asked me on Twitter, I think it was Nick Les or at Nick Le Nick Nez or Nick Les. Um, he said, Should I transfer out Sanchez for De Bruyne? And I replied with don't bring De Bruyne in, get rid of Sanchez for Ertzil, because he is in fine form, and the fact that you're looking at that, thinking he's easily above Sanchez, and that's only because Sanchez had a decent one, two, three games, you know, you're thinking, you know, that's 46 points he's got inside three games, and he's also got 76, that's 30 for the rest of them, not too good. But Ozil comes in in fine, fine form, I must say, you're looking at 10, 8, 8, 10, 5, 12, 13, 5-2-5, you know, he's just bringing in the assists, bringing in the goals, he's having a fine, fine season, 2 goals, 11 assists, what more can you ask for? Second midfielder is someone I've also got in my team, um, I probably couldn't have just got him on there, but it's, it's Ross Barkley, um, he's in decent form, he didn't have the best of games, um, a lot of people said, and I, he could have done better against Bournemouth, but he grabbed himself up 3 bonus points, a goal and an assist, so, who knows? He played against Villa. The only problem is that it could be seen as, you know, he played well against two struggling teams that are leaking goals. Yes, it does seem that way. But Palace are coming up. If Barley can reproduce the form, reproduce the, you know, performances he's been putting in the last two weeks, he'll be set for another decent week. And I'm keeping faith in him. I was tempted to get rid of him for Delafayu, but I'm keeping faith in him for the simple reason I believe this could be the week where he starts to show he can be a consistent performer. Maybe not up to the 10 point goodness, maybe just a goal or an assist or a few bonus points for a good performance. Who knows? But definitely worth a gamble. And lastly, well, probably more of a gamble for me, um, is Roberto Firmino. Now this is a strange one because he only grabbed up one goal and three assists since he joined. But with you know the fact that you got Benteke playing, you've got Sturridge coming back to full fitness. Uh, if more, well, he's marked 100%. But I don't think he'll start or play the whole 90 minutes. Coutinho's a doubt. You're looking at Firmino as you know the the definite starter because if they go one up top, you know if Sturridge starts, he'll come off. If Sturridge doesn't start, he'll come on. Coutinho maybe won't last 90 minutes. Firmino will last the 90 minutes. Um, uh, for me, it's definitely worth taking a risk on. Although it has been some shoot a lot, I don't think they can afford to, because if it's going to be a tight game, which, you know, it may well be against Newcastle, I mean, who knows? I mean, Newcastle gave Chelsea a 2 all. Who knows what Newcastle will turn up? But, even with that, he can make sure he gets himself a few little points, you know, goal and assist, and he's against Newcastle, so come on. You know, this, this is the game to, you know, shine. But lastly, we've got a few attackers, and I'll go through these really quickly. Um, the double barrel one, this so is where we get the double barrel one, is Icalo and Dini. Now, I can't split them apart. Dini's in fine form. You know, he's a penalty taker, but he's himself up a goal and assist, then a goal, then a goal. And looking at two clean sheets, another goal. He's in good form. You know, before he wasn't finding the net, now he's found the net, he can't stop finding the net. Four goals in the last five games, pretty decent, you know, and also an assist in that five as well. So, assist or goal in the last five games. And I'm looking at the fact that Watford have got Norwich. They're going to score. It's pretty sure, um, secured that. But you look at who's goal scorers this season, you'll find Abdi, Ikalo, and Dini. Abdi scored on the first day. Nope, he didn't. I didn't. I thought he was the one who scored on the first day. I'm thinking, might be thinking of Ikalo. But um, Abdi scored once. That's it. The rest of it has been Dini and Ikalo. So surely. You've got to get one of them, if not both of them in. I mean, if Vardy wasn't in fine form, or if Lukaku wasn't in fine form, I would take one of them out for Dini. Then you've got a secured goal scorer on there. You know, and if not, they'll be setting each other up. So definitely worth putting one of them in there. Next up, we've got an Arsenal striker. Now, I know I'm going to get a bit of stick from Arsenal fans, but Olivier Giroud. 
Um, I really rate him. Uh, he does. He is. He is very. You know, hot and cold. You know, Katy Perry hot and cold. Yes and no. But he's he's a goal scorer. You know, you look at the fact that how much football he's played. He still scores goals. You know, he's come on for 90 minutes, scored goals. He's played 11 minutes and scored goals. 16 minutes, scored goals. 90 minutes again, scored goals. 27 minutes, scored goals. 83 minutes. He can do it because he's a natural goal scorer. Gets himself in positions. He does miss the occasional chance, but he scores goals. So definitely worth putting in your team. And lastly, um, this is a tough one, but I decided to go with Graziano Pella. He's coming back this week. I think he was suspended for the City game. Uh, five yellows. He's coming back for this week, and of course, home against Villa, he'll lead the line, he'll get some goals. It's secured. I have left Vardy and Lukaku out because I feel like these four strikers have got more chance of getting, you know, secured goals. Whoever's been playing against Palace, you know, they could, you know, dry up all of a sudden because Palace are a good team. Livia Giroud, home against Sunderland, come on. And Graciano Pella, home against Villa, come on. But that is it. For this episode, everyone, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you get one of the players that I've put in your team for the free transfer. Or even if you're making a wild card, you can make a whole team up of all my suggestions. But thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, then leave a like. Let me think in the comments down below. And subscribe if you feel like I'm worthy. Um, if this comes out Wednesday, check out my Football Manager video, Mid-Table Clash, Episode 4. And hopefully, um, finally, get my Sheffield Wednesday series ongoing again. But thank you guys for watching. And peace.